Hi, this is Anthony from Evo Tech Pacific, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to engrave an image onto the top of this signet ring here. So, um, I've grabbed uh, an image from my computer, and we're going to upload it into the software itself. Now, I'm just going to uh, place where I'd like this image to be. So, somewhere like this, and good old Herman there and uh, we're going to then probably just scale that down just a touch not too much but uh, i want that to to kind of sit around the center of the ring if i can now what you'll notice is that we've got these sharp um, lines here and we want to get rid of that so how we do that is this we're going to bring bring out a, a circle or maybe an ellipse and we're going to just draw a shape just like that now we will need to maybe just uh, manipulate it across a little bit just so that it's covering Herman's head I don't want to uh, you know go too small I want to make sure that I get all of his head not just part of it and we're also going to uh, make sure that the ellipse covers this part of his neck here we don't need the shoulders and the rest of the image so once we've done that we're going to just click anywhere in the screen and we're going to select both the image and the ellipse we'll go to our transform menu and we're going to click on make clipping mask now when we click on that what it'll do is it'll boolean away any of the excess and just leave the image that we want to engrave. And the cool thing about that is that now, if we wanted to, you know, maybe maybe make that image just that little bit bigger, uh, we could uh, just by, you know, scaling it out a little bit. And that way we'll take up as much of the, uh, the surface of the top of the signet ring as we possibly can. Um, so I'm pretty happy with where that's sitting there, just like that. And that's good to go to the next stage now because this um this image here uh if we were to engrave that how the engraver works is that the engraver will uh engrave all of the dark areas and leave all the light areas now what i need to do is i kind of need to trick the software and we're going to go to the transform menu again and we're going to click on invert color so basically what that does is it will trick the um, uh, the laser engraver uh, software and now that we've got this negative image here we're going to then create our toolpath now to create a toolpath for photographs we're going to click on the photograph or oh, sorry photo engraving toolpath so we click on that there and we've got a few options down here now you've got your contrast and your gamma that you can play with but if you really want to uh, get the best result just click on recommend the best and the software will analyze the image and then it will determine what it needs to do uh, in order to engrave a really good image here so this here is um, you know where it's looking at the moment the intensity here is down at about 30 and if you want to see what that's going to look like uh, then we can click on nega here and it should engrave an image that looks like this, or more in particular, it looks like this one here, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you can increase that intensity and make it a little bit darker if you wanted, or a bit lighter if you really wanted to. And every image is going to be slightly different. If you've got someone who's got very white blonde hair, then you might find that you might need to darken the image a little bit, just so that the, uh, uh, the, the hair actually engraves. So you want more of a, uh, a grayscale image uh, rather than just a stark black and white. So I'm going to turn Nega off again and we're going to move across to the next section here. Now at the moment uh, the dot ratio here is at 19% and that is because we hit the recommend the best. If we were to adjust this intensity that dot ratio will go up or down depending on what we uh, use there in the slider. And we also have uh, different uh, dot patterns that we can go with so the default that comes out is the regular dot but if you were to move across to say irregular dot then it's going to give you a different uh, pattern kind of more of like a cross hatch pattern and so on and so on you could keep moving down and just playing around with the different effects you're not really going to know what all of those effects are until you actually 
laser engrave them all and compare them against one another so some images will be better than others but uh, i'm going to stick with the regular dot here you can also change the quality you can go down to low which will be a really fast engraving but it won't be the best quality engraving you can go to normal or better um, or the default that comes out is 600 dpi and that's the maximum that you can use there so again you can change you know how many uh, dots per inch you're engraving at that time so as i said i'm going to stick with 600 everything else i'm okay with so i'm going to hit okay to that now what that's going to do is it's going to create a toolpath and you can see what it's actually going to engrave all of those little dots there uh, that's part of the engraving the cross hatching here obviously for the really darker areas and we're then going to come across to the magic laser button now here's where we can select uh, our power option here the only preset here is for photo marking uh, and you can see here what it's going to give us it's going to give us this uh, this image here or this uh, preview of what it's going to engrave we can adjust that power down if you want to I'm going to keep it at hundred uh, percent because this is stainless steel that I'm engraving into the speed at a thousand millimeters per second I'm okay with that and the repeat count I really only need one of these so uh, I'm going to leave that there all right so after that we're going to hit start engrave and once I hit the start button, then we will be good to go. Okay, so now that we've hit start, the protective cover will come down and the engraving will start. As I said, we're only going to be doing one of these passes. Uh, usually one is enough. And there we have it. So what we can see here is um, the top of his forehead and maybe his cheeks didn't really engrave that well. It probably needs to be a little bit darker. So what I decided to do was to go back and just adjust that, um, uh, that slider there and make it just a touch darker and then re-engrave it. So we ended up with something that looked like this. Now, that's a lot darker, but once we put that in the ultrasonic, then you'll probably find that, um, you know, that'll dull down a little bit and that'll give you a good example as to what it looks like. Now, this is actually after it's been ultrasonic. It hasn't uh, been polished at all, but uh, it's definitely a better output than uh, original where the forehead was, uh, you know, not so good. All right. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that helps.